On April 18, 1906, the earth shook under San Francisco. Buildings collapsed and the ensuing fire swallowed rows after rows of houses. I vividly remember my mother coming to the bedroom and I remember her saying in Polish, Dzieci, Dzieci. That means children, children, you got to get up. And the men, the men say we have to hurry. By that weekend, several thousand acres of San Francisco was nothing but wasteland. Almost overnight, 300,000 people were rendered homeless. With their houses burned down and family members still missing, the refugees descended on parks and schoolyards. They were provided with tents, a quick fix for temporary housing. But with winter setting in, there was a need for a better solution. After several days of deliberations, it was decided that shacks or cottages made of redwood lumber would perhaps be the best answer. In a matter of days, several thousand of these were built and placed in seven parks across the city. This program that produced the refugee shacks and the aid to all these disaster victims was the first time that, that the United States government actually used scientific methods and expertly trained people to uh, produce a program that housed so many people. If it weren't for earthquake refugee shacks, I probably wouldn't be here today. My great-grandparents, Milton Slinky and Ethel Need, met in the hubbub after the fire and earthquake in a refugee camp. 16,000 San Franciscans were given this chance to start over. Each one of these shacks represented a chance for a person who lived in a tenement slum to have a, a, a little house to call home. In about a year, most people were rehabilitated, and the Parks Commission wanted its sparks back. The shacks were hauled away on horse carriages to various parts of the city. Shacks were built to be moved to private lots and used as a nucleus uh, to build a little home. And that's exactly what happened. They moved us up to 43 Carver Street. I have memories that the house set on that, that's where they put that shack. The refugee shacks faded from public memory for about 75 years. In July of 1982, I was looking for a cottage where I and my six-foot grand piano could live and make music 24 hours a day. I found a little rundown cottage on 24th Avenue in the sunset, and I'd lived there about three months ago, and one day I was out in the front garden planting some flowers, and a very elderly gentleman who lived across the street came across, came over, and greeted me and he said, young lady, and he shook his finger at me, young lady, do you realize that you're living in relief houses pasted together? I had no idea. I had no idea what he was talking about, um, but that began the whole thing. It was a very lucky thing for me in the shacks because at that time, I was working as executive assistant to the number two man at the San Francisco Newspaper Agency. And I requested permission to make use of their archives on microfiche on the weekends. And I immediately, this would have been in about September of 82, started spending every single weekend down at the uh, newspaper building on Fifth and Mission. This was the first house I ever owned in my life. It was as is, it was a condemned property, and I was sure it could be fixed up. The great, great nephew uh, of the woman that you interviewed, who's who, the 103 year old woman, um, he told me that his family was having a reunion, and there were people coming from all over the country to, this, to a reunion and he asked if his family could come and visit here. And uh, he brought his father and his brother and various other people. But his father, who was a little boy, his grandmother lived here, and he was a little boy in this house. He came in here and he just 
he looked, he just stopped and said, where's the, what did you do with the wall? <laughs> and, and in fact, there was a wall there. I mean, I've had lots and lots of uh, developers come here and do all kinds of, oh, I'll build you a house on top of the garage, two bedroom, you know, typical San Francisco house. If you, you trade this lot, and I'll build you something here. And, and of course, it, always the thing is, but and we'll get rid of that thing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but so I'm really, really pleased now that it means something to someone besides just me. It's what earthquake refugee shacks represent. Uh, a UC Berkeley professor said that they were the best tangible evidence of the greatest event to happen in San Francisco, this, this huge earthquake and fire. It was called, at the time, the most magnificent charity the world has ever known. Each one of these shacks represents a person's story, a family's story. They represent more than a disaster. They take us back to an incredible relief effort that if this happens again, and it will happen again. We just saw with New Orleans, these sort of things happen. Uh, we have, people will come together and we'll be taken care of. When we first lived here, and I would invite people, I called this place a shack, and I meant it in the most shacky terms possible. And I always had to apologize for it because I felt as though I was just living in this really kind of bad place. And, uh, but now I don't feel like that anymore. I feel like I've got something really special and it's great. <laughs> it's really nice.